Hi, I'm Sarah, and today I'm going to demo the new KMM app that I've been working on. To get started, first I'll show you what it looks like in Android. When the app first loads up, we get to an onboarding screen. And I know there's not a whole lot to see right now. I'm not really focused on the front end at this point. It's mostly about the back end and all the magic that's going on in the shared module. So from the onboarding screen, we click Next. And then it goes to the home page, which is basically a list of items from the fake API store that I found online. It's just an API that brings back certain products by, I think it has electronics, clothing, and things like that. So it's actually hitting the API here and returning a list of products. And then we've got a string resource here that's coming up and a shared image here that's coming up. And next, let's see what this looks like in iOS. So here I am in Xcode and I'll go ahead and run the simulator. And again, here we have the same thing. We open with the onboarding screen and click Next. And again, we get to the home page with the image, the string resource, and then the products from the API. So how does all of this work on the back end? Well, next, I'll go ahead and step into the code and show you all of the dependencies and everything that's going on to make this work on both platforms. This is my KMM application. And when I created the new project, I made sure to select CocoaPods for my dependency manager. So first, let's go ahead and go into the main Gradle build script. So we've got the common plugins here. Um, we got the multi-platform. And then I also added Google services. I'm really not going to go into this right now, but just so you guys know, these projects are connected to Firebase. So if you're looking at the source code on Git, you might have a problem um, because I haven't included the Google JSON files in my source code on GitHub. Uh, but you should still be able to step through all the code, and if you want to, you can connect your own project to Firebase as well. So now in the build script, I have some dependencies here. I've got IceRock Moco resources, and that's so I can share my strings and my images. And then I've got the Moco K Swift plugin, and this is a really handy utility that basically takes our Kotlin sealed classes and converts them to a readable format for both platforms. So I can use all of my seal classes in iOS, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. And then finally, I've added a build config uh, multi-platform library, and this basically allows me to use app properties. So, you know, you can create, um, it's kind of like the build config in Android, but for multi-platform. So this way I can have a secret file and store my API keys and things like that separately in a separate file and still use them in my shared module, which is really cool. And then finally, we've got our clean task and that's about it for this Gradle file. So next, let's go ahead and go into the shared one, which is much more inclusive. So we'll go up here and I'm adding my plugin. So we've got the Android library, we've got the IceRock mobile multi-platform resources. And again, that's for the shared resources. And then again, you have to add the Moco K Swift plugin here and go ahead and apply it. So now let's see, let's go through this. This is all standard. Um, now this is really important here to use. I'm using shared view models as well. So I've included Moco MVVM core. And in order to do that, you need to change your framework base name to multi-platform library. So this means that when you're in iOS and you're importing your shared module, you can no longer call it shared. You have to call it multi-platform library. And then in the framework block, I export MVVM core and MVVM flow. Now for my Android dependencies, I have Ktor client for Android. I have coin for compose and coin for Android. And then in my common main, I've got Kermit, and this is working out really well. It's a multi-platform logging library, and it allows me to get logs in my shared module, and I can see them in Logcat, and I can also see them in iOS. So I've really been happy with the way that's been working out so far. And I'm also implementing Ktor and shared resources, that's for Moco, and Coin, that's for all of my dependency injection. And now this is really cool. I'm also using the 
uh, Android data store, Android X data store preferences for multi-platform. So we'll see how this works. This is really cool. I can use the data store and I can make it work on both Android and iOS. And that's how the onboarding screens are working. And then finally, in the comment, I'm adding all my MoCo dependencies. So MVVM core, flow, flow resources, and the case with to runtime. And now for iOS main, I also need to add the KTOR for iOS. And then down here we have our common Android block and multi-platform resources. This is the block that you add in order to share string resources and images. So we just set the package name here and the class file, I'm just calling it shared resource. And then finally, we need to add another case with block down at the bottom here to install the IceRock uh, case with plugin. And this is what's gonna be useful for all of our sealed classes. Next, let's take a look at the Android specific dependencies. So I'll go into my Android app and into the Gradle build script. And we're applying all the standard things here. Again, I'm applying the Google services plugin. Um, so this is all pretty basic stuff. We've got compose, we've got our build types. Okay, so I'm adding navigation compose, I'm adding coin for compose so I can inject the view models, and I'm adding lifecycle compose so I can make sure that I can collect all my states with lifecycle. And I'm also adding the Firebase bomb, and I'm adding some Firebase in-app messaging dependencies and some analytics. I'm not going to go into that in this video. Right now I'm just focused on project setup. But in the next video, we're going to do some really cool stuff with multi-platform messaging. Now for iOS, we don't have any build.gradle files, but I do actually need to modify the pod file to make sure that I can use the MoCo shared view model dependency. So let me go into my iOS app and we'll go into the pod file. And here we have the pod for shared, which is included by default when you create your new project. And I also needed to add this line here, which is pod. MoCo MVVM Flow Swift UI, and then you have the pod spec and you specify the URL here, and I'm using 0.16.1. So just make sure to include that, and then when you sync your project, you're, it's going to go ahead and do the pod install and install everything you need to share the view model between Android and iOS. Those are the basics for setup and dependencies. Next, let's go ahead and look at the data layer in the shared module. So in common main, I have created my architecture very similar to what we do in an Android project. So I've got common main, then I've got my package, and I have my domain.models. And this is where I define my onboarding screen. So the onboarding screen is completely dynamic, and it's got a current screen of an in value, so current screen could be one or two or something like that. And now the heading icon is an image resource and the heading text is a string resource. And this is what we can do with the magic of MoCo resources. So down here in my shared module, I have a resources folder. And to make sure that the MoCo resources work, you have to entitle your directory MR. And then for strings, you need this base. And this is gonna be all of your default, um, like English string resources. So in here, I've got a new sign in heading, which says sign in to start shopping. And that's what we saw on the home screen. And then I have the onboarding text. And this is this shows up on the very first screen underneath the image. And it just says welcome here, you can shop for electronics, clothing and more. And the cool thing about this, if you set it up right, you can still create different versions for different languages. So here it is in Spanish. And then for my images, I have some shared images here. So I've got my logo SVG and that's really cool with MoCo. You can actually share SVGs. You can't share the XML format that Android uses, but you can actually share the SVG image. So here's my logo for the shop. And now let's go back to the onboarding screen. So when you use MoCo resources, it creates the shared resource file. Let's just go ahead and take a look at this real quick. And so it creates this file that we can use. Um, we've see we've got the new sign in heading here. 
and then we've got the logo here and this is what we use on both platforms. So back in my onboarding screen, I can create a reference to these and I'm good to go dynamically. And now to serve up these onboarding screens, I have just kind of a hard coded onboarding screen repo, very simple class or very simple object singleton that returns a list of onboarding screens. So here I define the first one, the current screen, this one is one. I want to use my shared images logo and I want to use my strings dot onboarding one text. So now let's see how we can access this from Android. So I'll go into my Android app here and go into my presentation layer and here's my onboarding screen. So it basically gets the current screen and what happens when you click that next button when the onboarding screen changes. So from here, I just access my repo from the shared module and I get the current screen, which is just gonna be the first one. And then I set up my column and I set up my image. Now here I can just call painter resource and I can say this screen dot heading icon dot drawable resource ID. So I don't have to do anything special here just because this is a image resource. I just have this drawable resource ID available to me right here in Compose. And then for my text, I can just call string resource and I can do the same thing. I have my heading text and I can just say resource ID. And I'm all good, that's all I need to do for Compose. Uh, now let's see how this looks on the iOS side. In my project, I have a home group and I have an onboarding screen just like we had in Compose. And again, as you can see, this is very similar. We take in the current screen number and on screen changed to uh, determine what happens when we click the next button. So I say if the current screen zero, go ahead and show a progress view. And now for my image, I don't need to do anything special here. I can just call image and UI image is this onboarding screen heading icon to UI image because I'm using in the data class, if you remember, I'm using the image resource. So then I just call a couple modifiers on that. But now for my text, I actually do have to do something a bit special here. So I've used an extension function and I was really trying to get rid of having extra helper functions in my shared module. But for this, I actually needed one. So let's go back to Android. And if I go back to my shared module and I wanna go to, uh, let's see, I wanna go to iOS main. There's a lot to keep track of in these projects. I tell you what, a lot of bouncing back and forth. So let's see, I want shared iOS main, and then I'm gonna go into utils, and I have this little strings file here. And all it does is just mr string, and it takes in the string resource, and it calls resource.desk. So this is the key here. When you call this .desk, you're getting the actual description. So, that just gives me a localized version of the string. Now, back in iOS, I'll go into utils, resource utils, and I have a little extension function here for text. So it takes in the string resource, and then it calls strings string, and then just passes the resource. And then what I get back is the localized string for iOS. So if we go back here in my onboarding screen, we can just see, I just simply pass in the object, that heading text, and I'm good to go for this one. That pretty much covers the shared images and the shared strings. Now let's get into how the API works. So again, I'm using the fake store API and I'll put a link in the description in the video. And um, so I'm back here in my shared module, common main, and I'm back in my data layer and let's go to remote and we'll go to models. So I've got my product here and it's super simple, just an ID, title, price, category, description, and image. And then I have a little products KT, which is really helpful for previews. And this is great. I can use this in iOS too and I'll show you how that looks. So it's just taking the JSON string and I'm using Kotlin X serialization to convert it to my products object. And this products value returns a list of products for me. And now next I have my KTOR API 
And if you've watched my videos, you've seen something similar to this before. So I have my abstract class, key to our API, and here's my base URL, which is fakestoryapi.com. And then I set up my client here. And what's cool is you really don't have to specify an engine. So that means that we can work for Android as well as iOS and the dependencies um, basically tell this client which one to use. If we're an Android, use the Android dependency. And if we're an iOS, use the iOS dependency. So that's why it's really important to set everything up first um, in your build.gradle. So this sets up the client. Here I'm also installing the logger and this is great. Again, I'm using Kermit and I can print out all my logs either in Longcat and iOS and see what's going on there. And I print out all. And then finally, I have my store API service, which basically just uh, inherits from this Ktor API and gives me my client. Uh, I set up a custom logger just for this file. So this will give me a tag of store API that I can use. And then I just have a little companion object here. This is the URL that I call to get the products. And then I just basically go call client get. I call the URL and then I return a list of products. And now here is where Moco K Swift really comes into play because I'm returning a service result. And let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what that looks like. So this is a sealed interface and it has loading, empty, success, and this is really important here, out T. So this is gonna be our list of products. And then finally we have an error. And with Moco K Swift, I can actually convert this into something that can be used in both Android and iOS. And let me show you what that converted file looks like real quick. For this, you go to shared, build, bin, and we'll go to iOS x64, and let's use the debug framework, and we'll go into multi-platform library Swift. And then let's go into this file here. So this is my project name, underscore shared dot Swift. And here's what the KSwift plugin creates for you automatically. So it's a hard-coded file. And as you can see, it imports the multi-platform library. And we've got a public enum here of my service result. And it's a service result Ks, which takes in T of any object, which is going to allow us to take in the generic types for iOS. So we have case empty, case error, and then we've got the result error type. We've got loading, success, and then we're taking in the T, which is going to be our list of products. And then here, so we go public var sealed, and then we've got each specification down here. So we'll flip back over here. And what I've done is I just imported this file just because it was the easiest thing to do and I wanted to learn how it worked a little bit better. But I believe you can actually modify some scripts, and this is in the uh, readme on GitHub if you want to check it out. But, you know, like I just imported it into the app to use it directly here. As far as how I'm actually using this, I'll get to that in a minute when we go over the view model functionality. But for now, let's head back to Android here and we'll go to the API. So again, this just returns the result success and the list. And otherwise, I just catch an error and I return the service result dot error and I can use the service result in both platforms. To get these onboarding screens and homepage screens working, that's all controlled by the view model. So back in my shared module, let's go to the presentation layer. And again, I just kept the architecture completely the same, so there's no variation, and we can just keep consistency through all of our projects. So presentation.home, I have a home view model here. And first, I set up my state. So I have a data class here of home UI state, and I have is onboarding complete, and that's true or false, the current onboarding screen, which is going to tell us if it's one or two or three, and then the products, which is actually going to be the service result, and it defaults to service result dot empty. And then the home view model, it takes in the store API service that we just looked at. It takes in the app preferences repository, which we actually haven't looked at yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. And that's in the data package, local, app preferences. And this is the data store that's gonna be shared between both platforms. 
and this controls whether or not the onboarding screen has been seen. So again, we set up a data class and we have the last onboarding screen, is onboarding complete? And then this is just copied from a different project. So here I'm storing the user ID and whether or not they're signed out. And again, this functionality isn't implemented in this app, um, but I might. So we'll see what happens in the future videos. So this repository takes in the data store and it's a data store preferences. And again, I'm setting up a logger here with Kermit and I'm setting a tag. And I'm just creating a preference keys here where I can have all my keys to easily access them. And then this is a clear method that I'm using and I'm actually calling this each time so I can reset the app each time that I run it, which will just be a temporary thing for now. And then I have a fetch initial preferences, which just uh, calls the terminal first operator to return the flow. And then I have the flow, which returns, it basically grabs all the data store preferences and maps them to my data class that we just saw at the top of the file. And then I can set my last onboarding screen, which is really important. So when they click that next key from the first onboarding screen, it's gonna go ahead and set the preferences to the last screen that was viewed. And then, so when I map my preferences, I can say if the last screen is greater, to, greater than or equal to one, then go ahead and say that onboarding is complete because we only have one screen in this instance. So it's all dynamic. And back in the view model, so that takes in this repository. And then I'm also adding a dispatcher. And I'll show you how that works in a second. But always inject your dispatchers uh, for testing and so we can use it on both platforms. Now here, I set up my home state and it's a mutable state flow. And this is gonna be a shared view model. But as you can see, we can set it up the same way like we were doing for Android. And now here is where Moco, um, share MVVM comes into play. And so we wanna say home state as state flow, and then we say C state flow. And this is what's going to allow us to collect the flows in iOS and Jetpack Compose. When the view model's initialized, I go ahead and I collect my app preferences, and I set up my home state based on the current onboarding screen, and whether or not is onboarding complete, and if, inboard, if onboarding is complete, then I go ahead and get all products. And what this does is it basically first sets the service results to loading, and then it goes ahead and it gets the products. And then I have a function here to set the last onboarding screen, which is gonna be called from that next button, and to clear the data store, which will just set it back to default settings. So this is great so far and we really haven't seen anything new here. It's basically very similar to setting up an Android app and creating our good architecture, but how do we integrate this on both platforms? And that's where Coin really comes into play, and I tried to make this as organized as I could. So here in Common Main, I have my DI folder, and let's go ahead and start with the app module. So this is really simple. We can just create a singleton for our store API. No worries there, and that's gonna be the same on both platforms. Now, here's where it gets really tricky. What about the data store? So here, I have a data store module, and what this does is it's an internal expect function, get data store module by platform. And what this allows me to do is I can basically create separate modules for both Android and for iOS. Because for Android, we're gonna need the context Whereas for iOS, we don't need that at all. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like on the Android side of things. So if I come up here to Android main, again, we have the same structure. So we have DI package, and then we have the data store module. And here's the actual implementation for get data store module by platform. And here I create a singleton and I call get data store, and I pass in coins Android context dot files directory and then I just have a constant here that sets up my data store file name and it sets the path. And then here I also set my app preferences repository and I do a get. So let's look at the get data store function. So this is a generic function that basically 
takes in the path. So this is gonna be your actual path of the data store, either coming from Android or from iOS. And it's gonna create the data store preferences. It's gonna, um, for threading, it's gonna call synchronized and lock it. And if it's already been initialized, it's gonna return the data store. Otherwise, it's gonna go ahead and create it with the path that you've created. And here's the constant of the data store file name, which I've just set to preferences. And now, when this data store is created, if we go back to the module, so this data store will be created, injected into coin, and everything's all good. So how does that work on the Android side? Well, we still need to hook the Android context into this shared module. So I'll show you how that's done now. Go into my Android app, and you set things up just like you would for a normal coin application. So you create your app file, and then on create, we want to call init coin, and we want to pass in the Android context. But where is this going? So I'll show you how this maps in. So right, this calling this init coin is actually calling the shared module and passing in the context to the shared module, which is something that we really don't need to do on the iOS side. So if we go back into the shared module, and we'll go into the coin here. And then here's the function to init coin. So we pass in the app declaration and we call start coin. And now here we create the modules. So basically from Android, when it's calling this init coin, it's getting the context here, which allows me to then get the context here. So it's a it's a little bit complex, but once you get the flow down um, and get, get all the files right, then you're pretty much good to go. Now let's see how iOS creates this coin module. So I'll go back down into iOS main and go into DI, and here's data store module. Now for this, here's the actual implementation of get data store module by platform. Here we create our coin singleton and then call get data store, which actually creates the preferences data store and takes in a producer path, which in this case is going to be iOS specific. So we call NS file manager, default manager, and it's going to create everything it needs for iOS and pass in that file name that I have stored as a constant. And then this module for iOS is also going to create the singleton for the app preferences repository. So when it calls get, it's going to go ahead and use this implementation and we don't have to worry about context or anything like that. That covers the data store module. Let's see what else we have for dependency injection. So let me go back to my common main, DI. So data store module. We looked at this. Let's get back to this. Um, let's go into platform specifics. So this is kind of a catch-all. It's basically an other module. And this is where I'm putting in my dispatcher. So I have an interface for the IO dispatcher, which is going to be a coroutine dispatcher, and then the expect function. So then for Android, this just uses dispatchers.io, pretty standard stuff there. And then for iOS, we're going to use dispatchers default. And that way, when my view model gets a dispatcher, coin can determine which platform and which dispatcher it needs. So back up into DI, finally for view models. So again, we have this expect function, which actually expects the module, and the module is going to be unique for Android and for iOS. So let me go up to Android, and we'll take a look at this. So in Coin, we create the view model, and we just call home view model, get, get, and then provide dispatcher. So that's going to go ahead and give us that dispatchers.io. And now for iOS, we're going to have a very similar thing, so the same thing, but we're going to get that IO uh, dispatchers default for iOS. And then I have a little helper function here, well, a helper object called get view models, and this is going to call coin component because for coin on the iOS side, we're not able to call the view model scope, so we have to create a singleton for the view model. And this little helper function 
basically initializes. So we're injecting the view model here with this call. So get home view model and then get the view model and get this singleton by injection. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like on the iOS side. So here back in my project, I'm gonna go into my home group and we'll go into the home view. And here I call my state object and it's a home view model. So I call this helper object, get view models and then get home view model. So once I call that, that's gonna go ahead and inject the coin singleton right into my iOS view. Now with all of these modules defined, let's see how it all comes together. So I'll go back into Android Studio and I'll go back into my DI folder and let's go into coin. So I showed you this init coin and basically after it calls the app declaration, it sets up all the modules. So we have our common module, which is the same for both platforms. And then we call get view model by platform. So that's gonna get the view model, uh, view model scope for Android and then iOS that we just saw and then get the data store and either pass in the context or don't worry about the context. Let's just look one more time how init coin is called from Android. So we'll go back up here into the app. So it just calls init coin and passes in the Android context. And then from iOS, we'll go in here. And just like we have the application for Android, we also have one for iOS. So I'll go into iOS app and iOS app here. And here you're gonna see, again, I've set up some Firebase configuration, which I'm not gonna go over now. But in our iOS app, we just call on the init, we call coin.kt.doinitcoin, and everything's gonna be loaded up specific to the iOS modules that we've defined. Now quickly, let's just go through the front end and see how everything's set up for Android. So I'll go back up to my Android app, and let's go into the main activity. So this is gonna be stuff that you guys have seen before. Here I'm getting a reference to my app preferences repository, and this is only so I can clear it each time the app is started because I wanna make sure that I see that onboarding screen. So that's just temporary for now. And then I'm calling my app nav graph, and my start destination is home. So on the home screen, I can inject my view model with coin just like normal, as long as I have the dependencies set on the Android side, then I'm fine to just call get view model. And in the DI module, we actually called that view model scope. So we're all good to go here. So I get my view model, I get my home state, and then I pass it to my home screen layout. And I always separate things out here so that I can work with previews. So my home screen layout is the one that's gonna be previewed. And it just accepts a home UI state and what happens when you click the next button from the onboarding screen. And I go through and I say, if the onboarding is not complete, then go ahead and show the onboarding screen. Uh, otherwise, let's go ahead and show the home screen and we'll show the shared image and we'll show all of the results from the API that's all coming from that Moco shared view model. So pretty cool stuff how it all ties together. It was really easy to get up and running on the Android side, very similar to what we're all used to doing. Uh, and then just the onboarding screen just gets the screen from the repo and goes through and shows the image and the text from the shared resources. Now on the iOS side, I try to keep everything very similar. So let's close all this and start fresh here. So the structure is extremely similar. This is just like our presentation layer. And here's the home group. Let's go back into the iOS app. So here it's gonna start the window group with the home view. And if we go into the home view, it's the same exact setup. So first I have my top layer that accepts the view model. And we're not gonna do a preview on this one because we, don't, we won't have to worry about injecting the view model or anything like that. So I set it up here with this get view models helper and the injection on the iOS side. And then again, I'm clearing the data store so I can run it fresh each time. This is not good code and I shouldn't be doing it here, but again, it's just temporary so I can continue testing the app and testing the data store. Now here, 
This is where I set up my home UI state. And as you can see, it's home view model dot state case. And this has to do with what I was showing you before with the Moco K Swift and the seal classes and the things that we can do. So let's go down here and I've defined some extension functions. So for my home view model state, I set up this state K and what I'm doing is I'm returning self dot state and I'm passing in the home UI state and I'm passing in a mapper. So what I'm saying is I want to map this C flow. I'll show you real, let's go back into here and we'll go into our home view model. So we've got this C state flow that's defined here in our view model. And we want, we want to consume this in iOS. So we just specify our mapper as a home UI state. And then back up here, I can just get my state case here. And just like we did from Android, I can see if onboarding is complete or not, then show the onboarding screen. And then I can access my state directly here and it'll get updates as the flow comes in. Uh, and otherwise, if it is complete, go ahead and show the home screen, which is our product list and our list of products from the API. And as you can see, this calls result case. So what result case, let's go down here. I have another extension function and this calls the service result case, any object, and then it just returns. So this is what I imported from the Moco K Swift. So it's just calling this class here and it's going through my seal class and it's gonna give me whether it's empty, error, loading, or success. So let's go back here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is determine if the onboarding is complete or not. And here's the onboarding screen view. And now uh, real quick, just to mention, if you're having trouble with your previews in iOS, make sure you go to iOS app and then you want to go to, let's see, I think it's all. And then just filter and search for previews. And just make sure that enable previews is set to yes. For some reason, mine wasn't, and I was having a hard time showing them. Uh, so just make sure you have that configured correctly. And we'll go back to the onboarding screen. And I can preview it here because I don't have to worry about the view model. In this screen, it's just getting the current state, just like we had in Android. So it's getting the current screen number and what to do when the next button is clicked. Uh, so let me just see if I can get this running here. And while that's loading, we'll go up here. So for the iOS side, I had to make these in 32s. Uh, so that was a little bit different from Android. And then here, I'm just saying if the current screen is zero, show a progress spinner. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get that onboarding screen repository that has the hard-coded um, screen, basically, for screen one, which you're seeing right here. And then I can set my image from the dynamic string resource, which I already showed you before earlier. And I can show the string resource and the next button. And then this, this calls on screen changed from that shared view model that we've shared with Moco MVVM. So it's pretty cool stuff to be able to do this. Once I got everything integrated, you know, it was really great to be able to share that view model and not have to write an entire extra file just for iOS. So really cool. And just to notice, because we're using Moco MVVM, we're importing multi-platform library and not shared. Now I'll go into the product list view and let's take a look at what that looks like. So again, I can have a preview because I don't have to worry about the view model or anything like that. And it's taking in the service K. So that's gonna be my sealed class. So up here, I set up the image and then I set up my shared resource string, which is sign in to start shopping. And now here, I can just do a switch case between my different states. So if it's loading, show the progress view. If it's empty, say no products. Uh, let the user know if there's an error with an error message. And otherwise, now this was a little bit tricky. What I had to do here, so this is the data and it's coming back as any object. So you just have to make sure that you cast it into a product array for iOS. And then we can pass in the self.id, which is the product ID. 
And then I just simply loop through my products just like we would in a lazy column. And I can just say product in and set my title and set my padding. And then for my preview, I had to do something a little bit different. So I get my products, and if you remember earlier, I showed you the products uh, JSON that was being, the raw JSON was being converted into a list of products. So I get that here. And then what I had to do is say, I want to say service result success. And I need to say mock products as NS array. If you don't convert it, you'll get this error here. Generic class service result success requires that product be a class type. So that just means that you need to say it's an array of products here. And then I can easily just pass this right into my products list. And I can pass it since it's getting a service result K. I can pass it in right in as one of my sealed class states, which has the complete product list from the API. I think that pretty much covers everything for this video. It's a lot to set up and hopefully I didn't forget anything. But the thing is, once you get everything set up and all of your dependencies squared away and coin working, then it's really easy then to flip through, create your view models and flip through the Android app and the iOS app. And in the next few videos, I have some pretty cool things planned and I'm just gonna keep working. Hopefully I'll get the UI looking a little bit better. I'm very curious to see what I can do as far as sharing design. Like I really enjoy using Material 3 for Android. So let's see what's out there for iOS and let's see if I can share my colors and you know my paddings and things like that. And I also wanna get into Firebase messaging a little bit as I mentioned before. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.